How's it going, guys? And welcome back to the Q&A. Today we're joined with my Matt K. Hello. Matt Aiza. Yo. Myself, Matt Archie. Matt Ash. Hello. Matt Kieran. Hello. And Mod Rai is on the keyboard gathering your questions simply at Old School RS with any questions you have, and we will do our best to answer them. Um, so there is something that has come up that we've decided we're going to talk about first and foremost before we get into any of these questions. Uh, are you ready to take away Mod Matt K? Yes. All right. Fantastic. I have a few questions I've gathered here. First one is, um, why have we asked RuneLate to close? So, over the last, well, many, many, many months, we've been working, we've been listening to you guys about a third party clients. Uh, we know it's been an issue for you. I mean, it's been the top rated question on uh, this Q&A for uh, forever. Yep. We've never really answered it properly. The reason being is that we've been working on a strategy for how we do it, how we get to a position where you guys know exactly what's going on, the sort of get clarity on what our stance is on third party clients. Um, so we have a strategy in place. We've had a strategy in place for many months now that we're working towards. Part of that strategy is to review the clients, and obviously we've reviewed RuneLight recently. Uh, during that, we found some issues uh, which we then raised with RuneLight. Uh, the main one being that um, they had a public deobfuscator, which for anybody who doesn't know means a way of hiding code so you can't easily work out what's going on. And uh, they made it public so you could easily deobfuscate our client and then publish that deobfuscated code. Uh, that is um, a breach of copyright law, which is why we're taking this down. It's a very dangerous thing as well. It allows players to, or not players, but you know, the more nefarious parts of the community to take our code and do very, very bad things with it, which obviously we don't want to happen. Um, like making botting tools. Basically. Like making botting tools, yeah, absolutely. Um, it's not a nice thing to do. It's not a nice thing for us having to do as well, but we, we have to focus on what is the right thing for the long-term uh, success of the game. And we want the game to be here in 10 years. Uh, many of the players want the game to be here in 10 years. And uh, these, these are the hard decisions that sometimes we have to make. And they're not always going to be popular. See, we do get that RuneLight wasn't made out of spite. Mm. That's a work of love by people who care about the game as well. And we do respect that. But we cannot have um, tools that deobfuscate our client so that people can write anything floating around the internet like that. Mm. I'm sorry. Um, that's really not viable, even if it was made by people who genuinely want the best for old school. Of course, we also acknowledge, and we're fully aware that you'd like more features available to you than we're currently able to offer in our client. And what we said in the news post about the ongoing strategy is to try and work out what we can get for you. Okay, so I've got a few other questions. Mm -hmm. I think you might have already answered this next one, which is what is RuneLight doing which other clients are not? So, uh, yeah, I mean, it was the public side of it, the, the obfuscation is public. Yeah. Um, like, a, like we both said, it's very, very bad. We can't have that. Um, and that is the one of the big differences. There's a whole load of other stuff that go on with the client as well, but that is the main thing that I think is, is, is worth talking to the players about. Sure. Um, and how will you stop the client from being reposted? So this is, this is, we've got ideas on how we can do this. We've got a team of uh, technical people, anti-cheat specialists, and there's, there's plenty of things we can do to make sure that's not a thing. Um, can't go into detail. Obviously, we're not going to tell you how we uh, how we plan to do things because that wouldn't be very good. Um, but we do have ways of of dealing with it, so that is ongoing. Cool. Um, why did you not tell the community first? I think this was an interesting one because when we talked about this, uh, we had several things we could do. We could go out, send out all the legal uh, letters that we wanted to, put a news post out at the same time, explain it all from our point of view. Um, but we wanted to talk to this guy. Uh, have a proper conversation with them and say, look, we know you're not intentionally doing anything bad, but we have to, we have to do this. Um, and we, want, we want to have a chat with him and sort of talk to him sort of voice to voice so that we could, we could, we could have the conversation with him um, and see if we could do it amicably without, without bringing, bringing legal people and, and, and you know, lawyers into it at first steps. So that's what we tried to do last night. Um, what is happening with other clients? So with the other clients, we are in conversations with other clients or we are going to be in conversations with the clients. We're reviewing everything. We're looking at everything. Um, I, again, I can't go into detail. I said this to Adam last night. I can't tell you what conversations we're having with other people because obviously it's confidential between us and them. But we are having conversations and we want to get to the end point of players understanding exactly what third party clients uh, are there, are safe and get rid of all this 
uncertainty about what's going on, but we can't do it overnight. If we could do it like that, we would. Right. Um, but we can't. This is going to take time, and uh, it's, it's not always going to be pretty. Last question for you about this topic then. Why can't RuneLight be converted into a closed source project? Yeah, so that's, that's the obvious feedback that came straight out of the news post that we put up uh, about an hour ago. Um, it's, it's really problematic. In order to effectively deal with RuneLight, we need to remove it as a whole because of the potential for botting um, and other branches. I think there's over 500 different um, branches of it right now on the on GitHub, so it's out there. We need to be able to deal with it as a whole, which means we can't take a closed source client and make it, uh, let it continue running. On top of that as well, within the strategy that we've got planning, we, we can't allow that to happen either. It doesn't fit with the strategy that we have to make that clear and obvious message to everybody. So we, we, we did think about that before we spoke to the chap, and that's just not something we can viably do. Okay. Well, thank you then. Let's get into the normal questions for today's Q&A. Cool. 